we Catholics do love our saints. <laughs> we are not alone, of course, in honoring the holy men and women from within our Christian heritage. Our Orthodox and Episcopalian brothers and sisters, along with others, honor the saints as well. But no one loves saints quite like Catholics. We love saints from every age, culture, and tradition. We love clerical, religious, and lay saints. We love saints who lived long ago in faraway places. We love saints who are native sons and daughters of this nation. We love saints who were mystics and lived a cloistered life, as well as those saints who were missionary in their apostolic works and were fully engaged in the world and the society around them. St. Teresa of Calcutta is especially beloved because she is a saint of our own times. While she was Albanian in her personal heritage and then spent most of her life working in India, she is universal in her appeal because of her vast travels over the years. Many people here present at Mass actually met her. St. Teresa of Calcutta visited Atlanta in 1995. She flew into Hartsfield-Jackson International Airport, like most of us have done countless times. We actually heard her voice on television and radio, and then saw her accept the Nobel Peace Prize. But we here in Atlanta love her most of all because of her extraordinary witness of caring for and loving God's poor, even right here in our midst. It is a witness that both thrills us and challenges us as well. Her life gave personal testimony to the love that St. Paul described in our second reading today on her feast. Depictions of Francis and Claire Peter and Paul, Patrick and John of the Cross, Rose de Lima, and Martin de Porres are found on images and statutes, statues throughout this local church. But Teresa of Calcutta actually walked these streets of Atlanta. She brought holiness close to the lives of countless people throughout the world and even here in Fulton County. Sanctity was a personal visitor to North and Central Georgia. But her closeness was more than something that we should brag about. It was a living challenge for all of us to care for the poor and for the forgotten. She made it impossible for any one of us to ignore or to be unconcerned about the plight of the neglected. Immigrants who are fleeing a violent homeland. Children dying on the very shores of the places where they had hoped to find refuge. Infants within the womb waiting to be born. People of color who are victims of discrimination and brutality simply because of their race or caste or religion. She picked people up off the streets because they were utterly neglected and dying and simply needed a place to rest or for some basically not to die alone and forgotten. Our newest saint, she is not exempt from criticism in our contemporary world 
that always need somehow to find fault in even the most generous and loving individuals. St. Teresa herself would be the very first to acknowledge that there was much more that she could and would have loved to have done to care for God's poor. Becoming a saint does not mean that a person has done everything perfectly, just that they did everything that they did do heroically and generously. Her sisters and colleagues and all of us now must continue to fill up what she left undone in serving the lo and loving God's poor. Having a saint walk the streets of Atlanta means that the Beatitudes took flesh within our own midst. While we admire her work and extraordinary example of love, mere admiration is not enough when it comes to saints who enter our lives. They challenge us to follow their example of holiness and love. St. Teresa of Calcutta was a woman of uncanny abilities, and she used all of the gifts that God gave her for others. Her example must spur us all on to emulate God's mercy in caring for those whose lives continue to be at risk. St. Teresa would expect nothing less from the people of a city that she once visited and graced through her very presence. <laughs>